Okay, time for a new video, and whether you are somebody new to my channel or you are returning to my channel to watch this video, it is greatly appreciated. As always, I'm filming this video in one go, so if I stumble over my words moving forwards, apologies about that. And also if the quality of this video is fairly poor as well, if there's any lag, anything like that at all. Sadly, it cannot be helped, and hopefully it is not too much of an issue for you. This is yet another Eurovision-related video here on my channel, and today I'm going to be telling you who is on my wish list for the upcoming 2023 Eurovision season, which technically speaking has already started because we are now several weeks into September, and the 1st of September is the date when the Eurovision season begins every year. Over the past couple of months, I have been putting up wishlist-related posts on the Instagram page that I co-run with my really good friend Pete, rajc.esc, link in the description, do check it out if you so wish, alongside my other social media pages too. But what essentially, well, how the page works is that my friend designs the posts and I write the captions, and because I am a much bigger Eurovision fan than he is, I also decide the names that go on these posts. So we've gone through quite a few European nations, mainly those countries that usually have a national final. Some countries, of course, alternate, it seems, between a national final and an internal selection. So we haven't done Germany, for example. But we've done Norway, Italy, Estonia, Spain, and so on. And it's just four names per country. In some instances, there's eight, because it was too difficult to just whittle down the list to four. But yes, I'm going to go through those posts right now and tell you a little bit about each song, each artist, I suppose. I'll try and be as brief as possible. This is the third time I'm filming this video. The last time I slipped over my words and made myself look like a right fool. And the first time I didn't think it was turning out very well. So third time lucky. Let's see what happens. Uh, Norway then, here we go. Prepare yourselves because this will be a ramble for the ages. On the Norway wish list, ladies and gentlemen, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. We have Adelien, Sophie Fjellvang, Merland, and Ulrika. Adelien was the runner up in the 2013 edition of MGP with Bombo, this sort of Latin, big, summery pop song. She was in the brown dress. Vocals maybe weren't bang on the money, but I still really enjoyed it. I loved this track, absolutely adored this track back in the day. Obviously, she lost out to Margaret Berger, and that was a great winner, and that did well at Eurovision in Malmö that year. But Adeline has never been back since. I've followed her career ever since. She's released a single here, a single there. She released one last year, was it, or the year before, called Obsessed. And she had a song called Olé, which was for the World Cup in Brazil, I think, all those years ago. Anyway, she's great. Would love to see her come back. Then we have Sophie Fjellvang, who was in this year's MGP with Made of Glass, which is a really touching, uh, fairly uplifting mid-tempo type of tune. And I believe that song was co-written, or solely written, can't quite remember, by Kshetl Merland, who is the next name on this list. Everything he's done in MGP has turned to gold, pretty much. This guy cannot fail. He went to Eurovision in Vienna in 2015 with Deborah Scarlett, finishing in 8th place, my second favourite of the year, A Monster Like Me, great tune, didn't win MGP convincingly, but it was the right winner if you ask me. Then he had a song called En Livred Man a few years ago, which didn't make the next round of the MGP voting. Ludicrous, that was a terrific track. He wrote Who We Are for Rebecca, which was the runner-up behind Alexander Rie back in 2018. I think he's been involved a few other times as well. And he co-wrote Attention by Ulrika, the fourth name on that wishlist post. Of course, Ulrika finished fourth in 2017, came back in 2020, won with Attention. Again, not convincingly, but the right winner if you ask me. Brilliant ballad, Falling Rain Pyrotechnic, Gold Dress, looked and sounded absolutely sublime. That song would have done well had the contest not been cancelled, of course. And she wasn't part of the 2021 MGP or the 2022 edition. Will she be back in 2023? I don't know. I'd love to see it happen. She's vlogging on YouTube at the moment. She's getting married very soon. But surely her time will come again. I would love to see it. So there you go. Four names for Norway. I should say, a lot of the names you'll be hearing today are female. 
And I have to say it surprised me a little bit because I was going through all of these national finals over the past 10 years for so many countries. And a lot of the songs that I really enjoy are by women. Just the way it turned out. Anyway, next, Finland. We have Annika Milan, Erika Wikman, Oscar and Cyan Kicks. UMK, if you ask me, is getting stronger year after year. It definitely is a case of quality over quantity. Some other countries could take note of that. Annika Milan was, in the 2015 edition of UMK, finishing in fifth place with a really good ballad called Good Enough. And she performed it alongside Kimo Blom, who passed away fairly recently, which is a great shame. But what a great song. I'd love to see her come back. Erika Wickman was the runner-up, somewhat controversially so, behind Axel in the 2020 edition with Cicciolina, which was a really sort of flamboyant, in-your-face pop song. Had that gone to Eurovision, had Eurovision not been cancelled that year, it would have been a standout performance, no doubt about it. It would have blown the roof off the Ahoy. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Quite cheesy and maybe a bit dated, but absolutely perfect for Eurovision. Oscar finished fourth in 2021 with a song called Lie, and that was just tremendous. I remember really, really loving that song, how tender it was, the tone of his voice. Mm, just lovely stuff. And then Cyan Kicks had Hurricane in this year's edition of UMK, which finished second. Great band, great live performance, well worth checking out if you haven't seen it before. Female lead singer, packing a punch. Tremendous stuff. I'd love to see all of those names back at some point for Finland. Uh, moving on to Denmark, DMGP. Excuse me, we have Saluna Samay, Ben and Tan, Anna Ritzma and Yuli Bjerre. Saluna Samay won the 2012 edition of DMGP with Should Have Known Better and went to Baku, finishing in 21st place. And if you ask me, people should have known better. That was a great, great song, great performance, so low-key. They went for a sort of casual living room vibe. There was a sofa, a guy playing the cello in a purple hoodie, if I recall. The drummer was the same drummer who performed with Reddy and is a part of that group who were in Turin earlier this year. Fun fact, if you didn't know, what a star. Um, but yes, Saluna Samay, great stuff, followed her career ever since. I don't think she's released an album in quite some time, but her music's very good, and I'd love to see her come back. Then we have Ben and Tan, who won the 2020 edition, and that song, Yes, was pretty simple, but very charming. And I was just thinking about this before filming. Denmark, I think, are absolute masters at this, having a song that wins people over. Maybe you're not so keen on it at first, but then at Eurovision, more people get on board with it. Sadly, it didn't happen this year, but Leonora in 2019, it happened with her. And had the 2020 contest gone ahead in Rotterdam, this song by Ben and Tan, I'm sure might have sprung a surprise. It might have done better than we were all thinking it would have done at the time. Apparently, they submitted a song for the 2021 edition of DMGP, but it was rejected by the broadcaster. Outrageous, because I've listened to it, and it should have been involved. Anyway, Anna Ritzma. Well, this was super cute stuff. She was there, ukulele, in her pyjamas with stars all over them. A bit like my duvet at the moment. And uh, this was just a very twee, sort of paired back entry. There wasn't really much going on here at all. But I say it again, charming stuff. I'd like to see her come back. And then Yuli Biera, who now goes by B Jules, that's her Instagram handle, B Jules Music. She finished third in 2015 with Ted Pomina Drama, uh, so a Danish language track. And this had a bit of a throwback 80s sort of vibe. I thought it was very confidently performed. She looked great, was having a bop around. Tremendous stuff. That song has always stuck with me. I'd like to see her come back. And arguably, that song should have represented Denmark in Vienna that year. You had Anne Gadegaard, who could easily have been one of these four names as well, with Suitcase, former JESC representative, the very first JESC in Copenhagen, as a matter of fact. I'd like to see her come back. Instead, of course, anti-social media went to Vienna and didn't qualify. Alas. I'm rambling, big time. Let's move on. Ah. 
Iceland next, one of my very favourite countries in Eurovision. We have Johanna, Aldis Arnadotir, Aron Hannes and Katla. Johanna went to Moscow in 2019, not 2019, 2009, 10 years before, my apologies, and Is It True is just a really beautiful ballad that I think still holds up today. She was in the blue dress. Oh man, if only it hadn't been for Fairy Tail, eh? Iceland would have had their first win. What a beautiful track. She did come back in 2011, and I've also got 2013 here. I don't remember her being back twice, but clearly she was. Maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? Anyway, I'd like to see her come back again. Um, great voice, and of course, Iceland's best result to date comes from her. Alda was the runner-up in 2016. That was quite a nice song called Now. Um, I don't think it necessarily would have qualified in Stockholm, but there we are. Aaron Hannes has been involved twice before. He had a song called Gold Digger a few years ago, which is just a really fun, playful bop. And then Katla uh, was involved this year and finished last in the final. Ugh, outrageous. With Thouth and Aff. And I'd really like to see her come back. I think she's studying now. I think she's gone to college or something. I watched a couple of interviews with her earlier in the year, and I think she said that. But still... If the right song comes her way, maybe she will be involved in Song for Kipnin 2023. Watch this space, I guess. Uh, moving on to Spain. Well, Benidorm Fest was a real success bringing that back, because look what happened. Chanel won, even though the Spanish public didn't really want her at the time, and she finished third, Spain's best result for Yonks. Who will be involved next year? I'm sure rumours will be coming our way sooner rather than later. The names I've got here include an act that's never been in contention, I believe, for Spain before. That's La Oreja de Van Gogh, the Ear of Van Gogh. A hugely successful band in Spain. They changed their lead singer a couple of years ago, but they still are a big, big deal. Number one albums all over the place. They've been making music since 1996. They're from the Basque country. Oh, man. Look at that. Loads of albums. The last one was Un Susurro en la Tormenta, A Whisper in the Storm, which came out a couple of years ago. Went to number one in the charts. No surprise. Their music is sort of pop rock. Slight elements of folk, I would say. Certainly in the songs that I've heard from them. Great stuff. We then have Aitana who was in, uh, let me just get this right here, Aitana was in Operacion Triunfo in 2018, uh, but did not win, bear with me here, she is 23, from a place near Barcelona, and yeah, two albums, she's been very successful, both went to number one, she's had a whole bunch of hit singles as well, woof, including a song called Mariposas, with San Giovanni, who was in this year's San Remo. In fact, Mariposas is the Spanish version of the song he had in San Remo. What the hell am I talking about? What do you know? Big hit in Spain, big hit in Italy as well. Oh, dear me. But yes, Aitana. Would love to see her come back. Tanshugueras, of course, were involved earlier this year with uh, Terra. And that was very clearly the Spanish public's favourite. But when the jury votes were added, they finished third. And then we have Reiden with Caixa de la Jorreria, one of the catchiest national final songs of the last Eurovision season. He finished fourth in Benidorm Fest, and I'd like to see him come back as well. Great stuff. That was a very good live performance. Catchy stuff. Mm. Portugal next, Festival de Canchao. We have Catarina Pereira who finished second in 2010 and 2014. One of her songs was called Canta Por Mim, I think. Oh, man. She definitely should have gone to Eurovision at some point for Portugal. Claudia Pascual, who I'm a great champion of. O Jardim, my God. I know I've whittled on about this in the past, but that song should never have finished last on home soil. She won FDC in 2018, and obviously, alongside his Aura, did represent Portugal on home soil all those years ago now. I'd like to see her come back. She has released an album. I think she's been on tour recently. Great stuff. 
Uh, then we have Barbara Tinoco, who finished second in 2020 with Passepartout. Ultra charming stuff, very whimsical. And then Cyro, who had a song called Ayin de Nostemosh earlier this year. He finished ninth, which was highly surprising because I thought it was a challenger for the win. Alas, any of those four names, they'd be welcome back in my eyes. We then have Estonia, Estilau. There's eight names here, so bear with me. The first is Elina Born, who finished eighth in 2013, came back in 2015 with Stig Rasta and finished seventh in Vienna. That's my winner of the 2015 contest, Goodbye to Yesterday, one of my favourite ESC songs to date. And then she came back with In or Out, I think it's called, in 2019, finishing 10th. Ouch. Didn't expect that at the time, but there we are. I absolutely can see her coming back. Greta Paya has been involved a whole bunch of times, including earlier this year where she finished in 6th place. Absolutely wonderful stuff. Every song of hers I've enjoyed, so I definitely can see her coming back sooner rather than later. Kerry was the runner-up with Spirit Animal in 2017, and let me tell you right now, I still have not got over this result. As much as I don't mind Verona, how the blazes did Estonia pick that song over Spirit Animal? Because I think Kerry, who is pretty much Estonia's biggest music artist, that song surely would have fared better than Verona. Surely. It was ready-made for Eurovision, if you ask me. And then we have Vanilla Ninja, who were involved in 2003 with Club Kung Fu. And there was controversy there because the Estonian public loved it. But, if I recall, there was no public vote back then. So the juries were like, Aha! This is pants. We're not having it at Eurovision. They then came back in... 2007, it says here, finishing in fourth place. My memory's all over the shop. Anyway, Vanilla Ninja. I think recently some members have left and new members have come in. But they reformed not so long ago after years in the wilderness. Surely they might be in contention to come back as well at some point. Then we have, of course, they did represent um, Switzerland at Eurovision in 2005 with Cool Vibes. What a great rock tune that is. The other four names for Estonia, Sissi, who finished fourth in 2019 and was the runner-up last year, which I think maybe surprised a few Eurovision fans. She is gearing up to win Aesti Lau at some point. Ariadne, who finished sixth in 2017 with Feel Me Now. That's a really great tune. And didn't qualify from one of the quarterfinals earlier this year, uh, which was very surprising. But I'd like to see her come back. Sybil Vane finished fourth in 2018. That's quite a repetitive track that they had. But it's really good stuff. Thought it was staged very well. Loved the outfits. And then Merlin Malk, who did not get past the semi-final in 2020. And then did not get past the semi-finals this year. And she didn't perform her song live because I believe she came down with the virus. And that was just a tremendous shame. Little Girl is a song that still holds up for me today. I still listen to it, still enjoy it. I thought it was a contender to win Aesti Lau at one point. Shows what I know. Moving on. Albania. Well, later this year, Festivali Gengesh will be back. The four names on the list. Irlimani, who finished joint third in 2016. Inis Neziri, who has been involved twice before. She had a song called... Piedestal, I believe. My memory is really bad at the moment. I do apologise. But that was so good. Oh, it probably should have won, you know. Eugen Bushpepper, one of the best vocalists we've maybe ever had at Eurovision full stop, let alone for Albania. Of course, he won in 2017 and finished 11 in, 11th apologies, in Lisbon with Mal. Fantastic. Those high notes. Woof! Tremendous. And then Alban Ramasai, who was the runner-up in last year's edition of Fick with Thea. And you might remember that was this sort of monochrome looking performance. So there we go, that's the Albania wish list. Latvia. Oh. Latvia need to sort themselves out. It's a big, big year for them, 2023. They need to get back in the final. We have My Radiant You, who've been involved three times. All I Know is one of their songs, that's pretty good stuff. Very chilled out music. Tom's Kaldorowskis was involved in 2017 
and in 2021, but he didn't come through the online vote. Both of his songs, I'm highly surprised, did not fare better. Edgar's Kralis has been involved a couple of times, most recently in 2020. One of his songs is called Tridomite. Yep, fantastic stuff. And Patrick's Peterson was involved earlier this year with Car Get You Out of My Head, which is this sort of very languid, sort of, again, I use that term chilled out because it really is. He didn't even make it through to the actual final. I'm very surprised. That's Latvia for you. Lithuania next, Latvia's geographical neighbours. Four women here. Greta Zaza, who was involved in 2017 and 2018. She had a song called Like I Love You and then Broken Shadows, I believe. Both great tracks. Ruta Loop has been involved a couple of times. Call Me From The Cold is one such entry. Lovely stuff. Uh, Monica Maria who absolutely should have represented Lithuania by now. She was involved in 2018, um, twice. That's a typo I think I made there. Absolutely. But anyway, yeah, really, really liked her entries. And she was involved in 2020. And then G Jan, or Jan, um, who is somebody who's never been involved before, but she's a pretty big star in Lithuania. And I've known about her for ages because she released a song years ago, maybe about a decade ago now, called Not Afraid. And all I remember really about that song, it's been a while since I listened to it, is that she's standing there in the music video and she stuffs her face with a donut or something. <laughs> I can't quite remember. She just eats this food. Oh, man. Anyway, that's the wish list for Lithuania. For Australia, we have Shepherd who finished third in 2019. They're a very sort of joyful, up-tempo band. One of the women has blue hair. Jaguar Jones has been involved twice. Little Fires was absolutely fantastic. She wore that dress, which sort of went up in flames. She's got a very unique voice. She sang Rabbit Hole in 2020, which finished sixth. And I know a lot of people really enjoyed that. Charlie performed I Suck at Being Lonely, which finished fourth earlier this year. That was a really lovely ballad. If that had been not for Eurovision and by somebody like Olivia Rodrigo, would have been a worldwide hit. Easy. And then we have Amy Sharp, who is a big star in Australia. I think she's great. Really like her music. Uh, hopefully she's going to come out with some new stuff soon. I think she's got two albums so far. The first song I heard of hers was... What the hell is the name of the song? I've got to look it up. I really apologise. I Said Hi, I'm pretty sure is the name of that song. Yeah. She's 36 from the Gold Coast. Oh. Oh, three albums. Mm. I Said Hi. Check that song out. Really relaxing to listen to. She'd be great for us. Australia. Moving on. Croatia. We have Lorena Buchan who's been involved twice before. Tower of Babylon was the runner-up in 2019. Great, powerful stuff. Mia Nogovic. Wow, she's got to represent Croatia at some point. She's been involved three times. Second, third, and third. Forgive me a prosti. Probably should have won Dora. Damir Kedcho did win Dora in 2020, but the contest was cancelled. Divli Vietre really grew on me after, sort of, well after the 2020 contest should have happened. And then Albina who should have qualified in Rotterdam in 2021, top 10 with the public, top 10 with the jury, still missed out on the final though. TikTok was great stuff, brilliant live performance, really grew on me again after the contest. Wouldn't mind it if she came back either. As for Malta, well, we know that I think it's 40 damn songs are being involved in their selection for 2023. Oh, come on now, I think it's fairly predictable who's going to be coming back for that, because it's the same sort of names year after year when Malta have a national final. Anyway, Brooke Borg has been involved three times. Second in 2016, fourth in 2017, third in 2018. Will she be back? We wait and see. Maxine Patch finished fifth in 2016 and sixth in 2017. One of her songs is called Bombshell. The other one was called Young Love. Really sweet stuff. Aiden performed Ritmu earlier this year, and he was at every Eurovision event that you can think of. It was almost as if he was Malta's representative instead of Emma Muscat. 
And then you have Nicole Atsapardi, former junior Eurovision participant. She finished third earlier this year with Into the Fire. Those are the four names for Malta. Quality, hopefully, not just quantity. For Serbia, Hurricane, who won in 2020 and then went to the... I've made a typo there as well, dear me. The 2021 contest, finishing 15th with Loco Loco. I believe all three members have left and they're going to be replaced by three new ones. Could be completely wrong with that. But anyway, Hurricane, big deal, loads of people really gravitated towards both of their Eurovision entries, millions of views online, and for their other songs too. Maybe they'll come back at some point. Taya, or Thea Devi, as she performed under in 2020, really liked her song. She finished 10th that year. Yes, indeed. Sarah Jo uh, was part of Moye 3 in 2013, who didn't qualify. And then she was the runner-up earlier this year with Mushkar China. And then Zoria, who finished third earlier this year with Zoria. That sort of golden look to the performance. Really trying to get through this now. It's a very messy video. Uh, as for the Czech Republic, we have Karel, who finished fifth in 2020 with At Least We've Tried. Annabelle, uh, running out of F in time. That was sixth earlier this year. Uh, Judy with Jezinki. That was third. That was a really, really striking song. And... It would have been interesting if that had gone to Eurovision, how well it would have fared. And then Celeste Buckingham, who is a Czech-Slovak musician, never been involved before. I don't think she's done much recently, but years ago she was having a lot of success. Mm. Wouldn't be surprised if she's involved at some point. Those are the four names for the Czech Republic. Moving on, Romania. Four women again here. Florena. Finished third in 2016. Ilinka won with Alex Florea in 2017 and finished seventh with Yodelit in that Kiev contest that year. Alex Florea has been back. She hasn't. Maybe it's her time in 2023. Don't know. Bella Santiago finished fourth alongside Jukebox in 2018 and third with Army of Love in 2019. And then Aris was involved earlier this year with Dos Vidania. But that did not even make it to the final. What a shame. That's the Romania wish list. For Moldova, we have Boris Chovali, who's been involved four times, but not since 2014. He should have represented Moldova by now. I think he lives and works in the US, don't quote me on that. Really lovely voice. Some good tunes back in the day. Diana Breshkan has been involved a whole bunch of times, as has Valeria Pasha. And then we also have Katie Rain, who performed Layla in Moldova's selection earlier this year. Again, like Malta, you can sort of guess which names are going to be back year after year. As for Slovenia, four women again. We have Amaya, or Maja Kejic, who represented Slovenia in 2011, finishing 13th in the final. That song is a bit of a fan favourite, but if you look at the split results... The juries loved it. The public really weren't that keen. Very interesting stuff. Ula Lochar finished third in the 2019 edition of EMA. She also uh, was at Junior Eurovision. Lina Kuduzovic, also at Junior Eurovision once upon a time. She was the runner-up in 2020 with Man Like You. And then Clara Jasbic, who's been involved in 2020 and 2022. Uh, last time out, she didn't get out of the second semi-final. But a really lovely sort of... Uh, I use the word whimsical again because it was that sort of thing. It was a sort of whimsical, gentle track. Moving on, we're near the end. Ukraine, who will represent the current holders in the UK next spring? Will it be the Hard Kiss, who finished second in 2016? Really powerful, rousing stuff. Will it be Cloudless, an all-male group. They were involved earlier this year. They had a song called Drown Me Down as well. I think that was their 2020 one. Uh, Brunette Shoot Blondes. They've been involved twice before. Fifth the last time out in 2019. And then Roxolana, who finished fourth in the 2022 edition of Vidbeer with Girls Just Wanna Have Fun. All night, all night. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's a catchy song. Oh, that's a catchy stuff. Good live performance. So there you go, four names for Ukraine. 
As for France, well, 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 we have Malo, who finished third in 2018 with Chow, which is one of my favourite national final songs, full stop, that I think I've ever heard. It was so underrated by Eurovision fans. I loved it. Piano, so gentle, and then this really sort of stirring chorus. Very unique voice. Ah, oh, tremendous. The live version, I'm not so keen on, but the studio cut, splendid. We then have Simone, who was the runner-up in 2019 with Tous les Deux, which is a really simple ballad, very atmospheric. Soa, who were involved earlier this year, male-female duo. I think they're brother and sister, don't quote me on that. They finished third with Sol, which was a sort of pop meets hip-hop type entry. And then, as a wild card, and they will never do it, but if they did, they probably would win Eurovision, hands down. Christine and the Queens. Oh man, love their music. Tremendous stuff. Tilted, brilliant. Girlfriend, brilliant. Everything they do, just very artistic, sort of pop, slightly electronic, almost new wave, this real melding of genres. They sort of reinvent themselves every now and then, and it works one that just tremendous stuff. Anyway, I've got to load up this page as well. Uh, Italy. Now, this post went up the other day. Eight names here for San Remo. Elisa, who won in 2001, but obviously didn't go to Eurovision because Italy weren't involved, and then finished second earlier this year with O Forse Se Tu, which is a terrific track. We then have Annalisa. Well, anybody who watches my videos knows what a big fan of hers I am. One of the best singers in Europe, if you ask me. She needs to do Eurovision at some point. Come on now. Ninth, fourth, eleventh, third, seventh... Just waiting to get her hands on that trophy. My God. Uh, she's had Il Diluvio Universale, uh, Una Finestra Tra le Stelle, Scintille, Dieci. Oh, my God. Every song she's had in San Remo, maybe not massively different from what she's had before, and quite different from her more mainstream album type stuff, I would say. But... Every song she's ever had in San Remo, I have loved. And I hope she comes back soon. Francesca Michelin finished second in 2016, but went to Eurovision because Stadio decided not to go, and she finished 16th with no degree of separation. And then she was second in 2021 with Fedez and the song Chiamami per nome, which was really, really beautiful. They sort of performed social distancing from each other, with Toilet Roll, I think, separating the two of them. <laughs> Something like that. Anyway, lovely song. Francesco Gabani, the legend himself. The winner of San Remo in 2017. Finished sixth at Eurovision with Occidentalis Karma. And the man in the gorilla costume. Huge favourite to win. Came up well short. And then Vice Versa, which finished second in the 2020 edition. What a tremendous song that is. We then have Elodie. Uh, big fan favourite, 2017 8th place, 7th in 2020. Gorgeous woman. She's had some two great songs in San Remo so far. Diodato, who finished 8th in 2018 and then won in 2020 with Fai Rumore, which was sung by Italians on their balconies during the lockdown in Italy, during the pandemic. And he performed it at one of the semi-finals in Turin earlier this year, and it was so good. Piero Pelù who finished 5th with Gigante in 2020. That was a very fun performance. And he ran into the audience at one point and stole a woman's handbag. And then Madame, who is a really, really successful up-and-coming singer in Italy, finishing 8th in the 2021 edition of San Remo. It was so difficult to pick just 8 names, though. Now, if you bear with me, you are getting the scoop here because the post is not up yet. I'm going to tell you the 8 names on the wish list for Sweden's Melody Festival. I will repeat myself again and say, feel free to let me know your suggestions in the comments below. The shortlist for Sweden, I should say, had about 25 names on it, but I ended up picking eight. So hopefully I'm going to get it up just here. Uh, Jon Henrik Fjallgren didn't make the cut. Agnes, Robin, who's never been involved before. Um, Tonus Achelius, Molly Peterson Hamar, uh, Lisa Ajax, I left out because they've been involved quite a bit over the past few years. 
But there are so many names. Anyway, these are the eight I've gone with. Salim Al-Fakir, who was the runner-up behind Anna Bergendahl in 2010, with Keep On Walking. Oh, that's just a splendid song. Very repetitive, behind the piano. But it was really, really good. And he performs now as part of a duo with another chap whose name I can't quite remember. But I would love to see him come back. And he's been a guest singer for many other people as well. Fantastic. Issa, who finished 7th in 2015, and then she was involved in the 2016 edition of Melfest with I Will Wait, and that should have been in the final. That was a great ballad with silhouettes on these massive curtains either side of her. Great stuff. Victoria. Come on now. 4th, 6th, 6th. As I Lay Me Down was good. Um, Save Me was good. Uh, and the other song, the name of which I can't quite remember, with the rain all over her. That was great as well. Memories all over the shop. She's great. She released an album not so long ago. Would love to see her come back. Hannah Fern was third with Liamu, with Hold Me in 2019. And then she had Brave in 2020. That was just her by herself. That finished fourth. Malu Pritz, I think it's just fantastic. I Do Me was a bit of a surprise qualifier. In 2019, she finished last. Then in 2020, Ballerina probably should have been in the final. She was knocked out in the second chance round. And then she was last in the first semi-final earlier this year with Bananas. I can sort of see why, but I loved that song at the time. Still love it now. Clara Klingenstrom was fifth in 2021 with Behöver in Die Dag, which was this sort of timeless throwback type tune, red dress, guitar, real sleeper hit for a lot of people. And then we have two names that have never been involved before, Lale, who's been making music for years, L-A-L-E-H, she has Iranian roots I believe, fantastic stuff, I was listening to some of her music yesterday and I thought this would be great at Eurovision, she'd be great in Melfest, whole bunch of albums, been making music for years, big star, and then First Aid Kit. Two sisters, they are great, very folky. One of their songs, what's the name of it? Emmy Lou, absolutely sensational. One of the best, finest songs I've heard for a very, very long time. That is great stuff. They're going on tour next spring, so they wouldn't be involved in Melfest. They're releasing an album as well very soon called Palomino, I think it is. They are great. And something like that at Eurovision would be very, very welcome. Uh, so there we go. Not much else to say. That is the Sweden wish list, and that is the end of this video. But who knows, maybe in the future we'll do some more wish list posts as well. A massive ramble. I know it's been a very messy video. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and check out our Instagram page. It would be greatly appreciated. RAJC.ESC, where you can see pictures of the names I've mentioned today on there. Until next time, I'm going to shut up now because my voice is irritating me. Take care of yourselves, stay safe, and hopefully you'll be back on my channel soon. Bye for now.